here on today's News Talk. TNT Radio. TNT Radio. Now, now yesterday, Julian Assange won the right to appeal against the action from the United States, which is trying to extradite him there where he may be locked up for up to 175 years simply for reporting the truth. He's a political prisoner and he's done nothing more than journalism. Um, but joining us to unpack the implications of yesterday's decision in the High Court in London is Radha Sterling, who is a leading human rights advocate and founder of Detention in Dubai. Radha, welcome to the show. Look, you, you've been watching the Julian Assange case and you saw the verdict yesterday, you heard the speeches, you heard the judgment. What does this mean now? Where are we now? I mean, do you know that there's a lot of people sort of celebrating the outcome of the court proceedings yesterday, which in a sense give us some hope that the courts might eventually say no to this extradition. But I think you know, we're at the, the point where I think there needs to be more than that, because the ramifications of the kind of decision that is being made through the British courts that the United States can at any point lock someone up for five years who hasn't mm. even committed a crime on their soil, for example, um, mm. you know, if Julian Assange or someone else uh, accused of the same sort of investigations the journalism that he conducted, they could, again, the United States, under the rules that we have, the agreements that we have, they could do it again. And I think that's mm. really what we need to be looking at. Yes, we hope that ultimately the US will feel pressured enough to drop the case against Julian Assange. But in the absence of that, hopefully our British legal system will prevent it. And the UK courts have sufficient, more than sufficient evidence on multiple counts to decline the extradition request to the United States. Unfortunately, they, they've asked that we don't even talk about the conversations that were being had at higher levels about his execution. We're now being told they're irrelevant for the court to hear. I disagree. I think any conversation, if it came from another country, such as Saudi, discussing executing someone we were thinking of extraditing, that would be a much bigger deal. So why does the United States get this free pass when other countries, we simply wouldn't allow that, even where we have extradition treaties with them? The United Arab Emirates and the UK have an extradition treaty and we regularly deny based on unfair trials, human rights abuses, uh, discrimination mm. and torture. So why is the US getting this almost free pass to talk about executing someone uh, who they are requesting the extradition of? And we're turning a blind eye to that. And I think we have to look again, like I said, of the bigger ramifications that ultimately this our cooperation with the US in this instance is giving them the absolute power to lock anyone up anywhere in the world. And I don't see how we can mm. support that sort of authoritarianism and that universal jurisdiction that seems to only be coming from the United States. Well, it is a, an absolute shock to me as, you know, someone in this country, in the UK, we think we're an independent nation, but here you've got another nation demanding that we keep someone locked up until they can extradite him. So he's either going to be locked up in Britain or he's going to be locked up in America or executed in America. And this is what they want. And the government and the courts seem to be doing the bidding of a foreign power, which is totally inimical to the Bill of Rights of 1689, which says no foreign power should have any jurisdiction in this land. Um, it's against yeah. that, isn't it? And, you know, if we yeah. believe in the fundamental constitution of this country, this goes against that doesn't it? I mean, it's one thing to have diplomatic agreements. It's another thing to have alliances and friendships. But I think when you are giving them the sort of power that we're seeing in the case of Julian mm. Assange and many others, we're dangerously close to completely submitting the rights and freedoms of citizens of the United Kingdom. Now, mm. it might be good for, the, for certain members of the government. It might be good for certain people trying to strike up, you know, their private arrangements or treaties. Um, corporations and, and so on. But is it good for the average citizen to have these sorts of powers in place? And mm. I think that the, the UK really needs to look at its sovereignty, at least needs to look at its power. Too often we're conceding or submitting to the will of the United States in particular. And I think that absolutely needs to be looked at. We talked about freedom from the EU, freedom to make our decisions. And now we're back talking about, you know, treaties with the World Health Organization and these extradition mm. treaties with countries that are going way above and beyond our normal rule of law, especially in the case of Julian Assange. Mm. So what happens now? Um, will he be able to appeal 
to the European Court of Human Rights? Is that where it goes? And, and if it does go there, what's likely to happen next? I mean, he's he's looking at any possible appeal route that he he can have, and of course, that is the you know he has the United Nations under the freedom of expression, arbitrary detention. But again, are they going to have the power to stop an extradition? No. Uh, if he goes to the uh, European courts, we can see they probably won't be able to intervene in the British justice system. So I think we're going to have mm. a ruling from the High Courts of England that's going to determine whether or not they believe that Julian Assange would be entitled to a a trial, a fair trial in the United States, whether he would be discriminated against, whether he might suffer, suffer any sorts of human rights abuses. And they are the only reasons under the UK's extradition treaty to any country usually is, the, you know, the, the only reasons they can deny an extradition. So that's what his team will be looking at. I do believe that he has more than enough evidence. I've seen I, other clients of mine um, who have faced extradition to the United States have won their cases in the past couple of years. And that was based on, again, health issues, unfair trials, um, mental health issues as well. And Julian mm. Assange meets absolutely all of those criteria. So at this point, we just need a very uh, brave sort of independent judiciary to see that you know the the politics should not come into play in this case mm. now just just before we go i'd like to ask you what do you think needs to change so that this doesn't happen again do we need to get rid yeah. of this extradition treaty or do we need to put some laws in place in the uk or repeal some laws in the uk or, or anything else I absolutely think that it is time, and I'm going to be writing to various parliamentary committees, I'm going to be writing to the Home Secretary, I think it's time that we assessed our extradition treaties and installed provisions in there that would prevent countries like the United States from overreaching their jurisdictional authority and using extradition as a way to expand their own country's borders. Now, mm. I see that the test for that would be would we allow Saudi to do the same thing that the US has done to mm -hmm. Julian Assange? So if Saudi Arabia said, this man stole secrets and published them, they were negative about, against our government, we now want to extradite him, even though he wasn't in Saudi Arabia at the time of the offence. And I think if the UK would say no to that, then the UK should say no to everyone asking for that <laughs> same privilege. So that's what needs to be done here is... Yes, we have some precedents that protect against um, sending people based on human rights issues and fair trials, but I think the legislation actually needs to be looked at again. The whole treaty system needs to prevent that overreach, that universal jurisdiction that most countries are seeking to exploit at this point. I think that's a very, very good and salient point there. If Saudi Arabia couldn't mm. do it, why should any other country be allowed to do it? Shouldn't we treat all countries the same, especially when it talks of, we're talking about the lives of potentially British citizens being sent yes. um, abroad to face uh, an execution charge? Absolutely. I totally agree with you on that point. That's a very, very good point. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I wish we could talk more, um, but I believe we will be able to in the future. Thank you. Oh, thank Thank you, Rada David. Sterling, for joining me. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.